Okay, you're gonna love this one. Sky News, or as I say, Sly News, decided to do a gotcha interview by inviting the government minister, Kemi Badenoch, to corner her and trap her on the issue of these net zero U-turns. Well, Kemi Badenoch did not fall for the trap. Okay, this is about our trash media. Uh, the lamestream media that have been going around controlling the narrative or shifting the narrative for such a long time without being challenged until recent years. When you have 2CTV and many other independent media outlets fact-checking the fact-checkers. This is about the interview we had. Uh, Jane Secker, uh, the Sky News uh, presenter, against uh, Kemi Badenoch, a government minister who I sometimes agree with, sometimes I disagree with when she gets a bit soft and uh, you know, compromises on certain things, but uh, she's generally sound, okay? She's all right, she's all right. <laughs> she has potential. But this is actually about uh, this interview um, that happened, uh, I believe, this morning. Um, and uh, Jane Secker was asking about uh, uh, the, the idea of uh, delaying the net zero target deadline to ban petrol and diesel cars. People like Jane Secker are in the bubble of London, proper cosmopolitan bubble and those who are living in London who control not just the media narrative but also the political establishment they are completely out of touch with the rest of the country so they assume well we have the London underground we have uber we have all these taxis who needs cars anymore well this whole thing backfired massively watch this <laughs> These changes, they don't really help the poorest in society, a lot of people would argue. The poorest in society aren't fretting about when they're going to replace their car with an electric car because the poorest in society don't drive in this country. I think, the I poorest think, in I think society I'm, are not I'm, worried about I'm, installing I'm a heat I'm so pump. sorry, but that is a ludicrous statement. If you step outside of London, come to my constituency, you will find the poorest in society drive because they live in a rural area. That, These but, rules, no, 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 no. What you said is actually quite astonishing. It is not These, astonishing. It is a third astonishing. of the country doesn't what drive. You, what, the, the third, third of the country doesn't People who cars. live in cities, people who live in cities, will be able to deal with this in a way that is quite different from people who live in towns and rural areas. We need to think about everybody, not just the metropolitan bubble. There are poor people bubble. that live in cities. Yes, there in, are. In cities across the country, it, this is nothing to do with an urban yes, bubble. Yes, and yes, metropolitan it, 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 I'm afraid. I'm I live afraid, in the countryside and just, I come from Newcastle. Well, I'm afraid that my constituents. I'm afraid bubble. that my constituents raise these concerns all the time, and those who are least able to afford it are the ones who are making the most complaints. And we, as a government, are thinking about them. So I completely disagree with that assertion. What about those who are poor and living in rented homes in cities or in the countryside who are now not going to get their heating upgraded by their landlord because of this? That is not, that is not what the policy is. We haven't said that there should be no heating upgrades. What we have said is that people won't be forced to change the type of boiler that they have before a certain date. They will still have those. And in fact, what this is doing is making it easier for them because they won't necessarily have to take a more expensive option that might actually be less practical. That is the right thing. So that's quite interesting. And obviously with the, the, the actual installation of heating pumps, basically the boilers, that's a good idea to not force people anymore. But that's going to be a different problem in the future. <laughs> but the whole debate was about the cars, right? Rural versus urban. James Sekia at some point said, Hey, I, I know, I know that I'm very much in touch with outside of London. I, I live in a countryside. I'm from Newcastle. <laughs> she's from Newcastle, okay? I think some digging. Because uh, she believes that she's in touch with society. As a Sky News presenter working in London, central London, right? She, she, firstly, she said, well, one third of the country don't own cars. One third of the country, not one third of the poor people in the country. Because a lot of them are rich people in London who don't have a car, but they're rich. So uh, pe most people outside of the cities, especially London, are still in poverty, but they still have a car because they have to have a car. Might not be the best car, might be a very cheap car, but they have to have a car because they're outside of London. And it's not even just complete poverty as well, but people who are struggling with the cost of living crisis, that's still a category. But I did some digging to find out if she's claiming to be from a countryside from Newcastle, right? So she implied that she's in touch with working classes. She, she's one of us. Is, is, she, is, she, is, she, is she one of us? Okay. Jane Soker, born 12th of July, 1972, in uh, Bedlington, uh, Northumberland, right? Then I discovered, what sort of school did she go to? Westfield School, Newcastle upon Tyne. A private day school for girls age 3 to 19. Um, okay. 
I'm, I'm not really into um, class war nonsense. I'm not really into uh, targeting people based on their social class, especially children who don't really have a choice in terms of being born into a poor family or rich family. But I do have a problem with those who are claiming to care about class divisions, like these uh, metropolitan liberal elitist idiots, and then they claim to be one of the, one of the people. Yeah, well, one, of, one of the commoners. By going to a private school in Newcastle upon Tyne, thinking you are from a, some sort of a, a deprived area in, in countryside. <laughs> I, I, I can't claim to know everything about the country. I mean, I did do a, a farming documentary the other week. That was fun. But I'm from a council state in Lewisham, South East London. I know about that. I know about council states. I know about South East London. I know about all that chaos, the urbanisation of uh, uh, our areas. But I, I wouldn't know about the countryside, but I do know about poverty and uh, the council states and what happens there. Uh, Jane Soka, what is she going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah I, I know about poverty. We were from the countryside and we were in Newcastle. Well, and we didn't have a car. I don't know what she's trying to imply, by the way. But it's, the whole thing is nonsensical. And Kevin Badenoch easily won that debate. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Maya TC, and we are the media.